Hello, hello, hello. It's Monday and welcome to my Monday Teach. Um, just a quick introduction, but anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Helen Bullen and I'm a business coach that specializes in coaching therapists. Why do I do that? Because I am a therapist myself, I'm an osteopath and I own a large multi-healthcare practice and I'm in the thick of it just like you are and I have been for 15, 20 years now actually, including my massage work as well that I did. So I fairly much know the life of a therapist and I've come on today to talk about, hi Sue, nice to see you, to talk about, and if you're coming on, please say hi, test out my comments, give me a little comment, say hi, tell me how you're doing, have you got snow or no snow? I'm looking out the window now, actually out the back, and it's really sunny now, very funny. It's, um, yeah, gonna be cold this week, and if you haven't started thinking about your clinic, and what you're gonna do at the end of the week if it does snow, look at your weather forecast. I'm already starting to think, mm, have I got to put provision in for my Pilates classes that run in the evening that might get canceled? Do I need to move more patients to the beginning of the week? What can you do? Um, I can't see any comments as yet, and I know Sue's watching, and normally Sue is really good at putting a comment. So if I can't see the comments, please don't stop putting them in. I will come back straight away afterwards. So I'm gonna talk about whether you love your business uh, you know, anymore, whether you've fallen out of love, whether you absolutely adore it, in which case you do. So put in the comments now, do you, and if you're watching on catch up, just put replay and put it in the comments. Do you love your business? Do you loathe your business? Are you a bit like mm, in the middle? You know, where do you sit with it? And I know I have different days of the week I feel differently about my business, but I know quite often when people fall out of love with their business, especially a therapy business, there are normally other things underlying it. Now, there is the obvious that actually you've decided being a therapist isn't for you, but I'm gonna sort of assume that isn't for you. I'm just gonna move slightly, sorry guys, a bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm actually gonna assume that isn't you, that you actually like being a therapist, you love your clients, I'm gonna fidget around, I quite often do this, I don't know, with my tripod, anybody that watches me knows that I've got a couple of voices going on in my head, <laughs> makes me sound like I'm a little bit odd, and they sometimes go to me, for goodness sake, move that, do that, and I'm afraid I do call the elephant in the room and I do it. Aha! Sue, I can see my comments. Thank you for testing it. So if you're on here, if you're watching on replay, how do you feel about your business? Do you love it, not love it? Sue says, I love my business and most of the time. And that's probably where most of us are. We love our business most of the time. But if you don't, you might feel, be feeling some of these. So you might be feeling exhausted. You might be disillusioned. You might feel that you're working every flipping hour in your business and yet you're not getting the returns you want. You might even be thinking, well, I'd be better to work down the road in the shop because I'd get more money. What is it that you feel when you're not in love with your business? Or is it maybe that you haven't got a total fall out of love, but maybe we need to rescue your relationship? And that's a hope, the point that you are at. You know, you can get really frustrated when you run your own business and you spend a lot of hours doing marketing or maybe not marketing or working or waiting and hoping and just wishing that you're gonna get clients. It can be really frustrating. And my job as a business coach for therapists is to make it much easier for you, is to make it so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Because I know as a therapist, when I first started, I didn't want to have anything to do with business. I wanted to help people. Now, my journey has changed slightly because I've done a lot of business training and I really like running a business as well as I like being an osteopath and maybe the balance is swinging that I like the other way. I really enjoy running the business, but I'm not expecting you to do that. And I know that the people I work with quite often, it's not that they don't know the knowledge, it's me telling them the quick way to do it. Do it this way, this will get results. Forget about that, that won't get results. Don't waste your time on worrying about this, but actually you do need to focus on this level. And that's what you need to know. So if you haven't got that knowledge, Come into my free group, the Clinic Essential Group. There's going to be a lot more in there. Or maybe you need some support and you come into my membership group or I've got an online course. But if you're interested in knowing how to work with me at all, I'm not going to really talk about that today. Just come in the comments and put more information, please, or how can I work with you? And I will come back and give you some of those links. So that's fine. You might feel uninspired. You might have been doing your therapy business for years and actually feel a little bit stale in it. And then that's a case of thinking outside the box, going and looking at things you do like, maybe get some inspiration, whether you go and look at other clinics or you go online, look at Pinterest, look at clinics on Pinterest, or you just watch people like me and go, well, actually, I like some of the things she does. I don't like things she other does. Don't, don't like things she does on the other hand. You don't have to get inspiration from everything you like. You can get inspiration from things you don't like. You can say, actually, 
I've seen that, I never want that to happen for me. But actually, you know, pick up things, what little things, maybe you'll see it in a shop or you'll read it in a book. Do some reading, get some inspirational reading behind you. I ran this morning and I, um, I ran to now, I've forgotten it now. What's the new musical out, which is the Barnum, the great entertainer, I think it's what it is. I like that sort of music, it's musical music, music for me. I need to do a fast run. I did on 10 minute miles, which is pretty fast for me, nine and a half minute miles all the way around for three miles, that was because I was listening to very motivational music. So motivational, when I walked in, I needed to put it on the big speakers here and carry on listening to it, much to the disappointment of my family, who were still getting up. Whereas I'd been up since five, it was then half past seven and I was ready to rock the world. But what is it, what is it you like? So for me, I get inspired by sitting by the sea. I always, at one point in the year, I'll go and borrow, my friend has a beach hut down at Muddyford, where literally you live on the side of the beach. You can stay in there. I quite Quite often like to be there on my own because I get a load of time for thinking but that's my place maybe your place and I have another place I have to think about or time to think about is in a coffee shop it's a coffee shop in Cobham if you live near me it's called Fago I'm just gonna give them a shout out it's noisy it's buzzy it's quite I think it's quite cool and trendy my kids would probably say otherwise but for me I like the ambience in there and I quite often if I need to write I will go in there, I'll have a cup of coffee, I might have a brunch, and I will write and write and write, and it is my place for switching off. And I handwrite when I'm in there. I literally don't have my computer, I sit and I write. So where is it you go? So tell me, what inspires you? What have you maybe forgotten that you need to go and do? And it doesn't have to be something business-wise, it might be something else, it might be going for a walk, it might be going for a swim, it might be having daffodils on your table. I love that, I love the thought that spring is coming. So I've got some that have come out, I've got some behind that that are in bud. For me, it's a pound a bunch. I quite often will go and buy tulips and daffodils this time of year, even when it's snowing and it is outside, just to tell me and my head that the spring is coming. Oh, hi Sandra, nice to see you. And Sandra says she went live this morning, so Sandra was on my boot camp at the weekend. Well done, how did it go? Tell me how it went. So falling in and out of your love with your business is normal, but if you're really falling out of love and maybe thinking this isn't for me, then we need to think why that is. And, this, and again, if it's because you just think, actually, I don't like dealing with people, or I don't like putting my hands on people if you're a manual therapist, or actually I've had enough, then, then yeah, by all means, don't do it anymore. But if it's just you haven't got enough money and you don't know how to get clients, then we need to sort you out. Because that's really sad when I listen to people that have given up their dream job, the job they love, just because they can't manage the business side. So quite often, the reason for falling out of love with the business is because you don't get enough money to make yourself feel secure. And I don't care what anybody says when they say money is the root of all evil. Absolutely rubbish because a lot of money does a lot of good. Uh, money is, you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't do things for money. Well, actually, I do do things for money because I want to be able to put back with that extra money. I want experiences for me, but I want to be able to, so if I charge money to my patients that can afford it, when I've got a patient that can't afford it, I can let them in three, free to have a treatment. I like doing that. I love that. That's my world. Sue says she listens to the radio as song titles or news stories inspire blogs. Yeah, definitely. I'm quite like that. I listen to podcasts for me. That's who I listen to. People that inspire me or sometimes people that don't inspire me. I watch some people on lives and things that I think, I don't want to do it like you, but I learn from them. So if you're getting that from me, great. Or if you're getting positive advice from me, I don't mind which it is. Use it. So when you can't get enough money, that is a horrible place to be in. And I know that feeling. I've been there when I can't pay the rent and I couldn't pay my bills and I've got two children and they were still wanting and I was still trying to keep it all normal, still wanting the tap lessons, the dance lessons, the swimming lessons. Now, that sounds like a very sorry problem. But at the time, I was sleeping on the floor. I didn't have a bed. My kids had the bedrooms. I didn't and I was scraping money together, putting things on my credit card, scraping money together, putting things on my credit card, scraping money together. It's not a nice place to be in. And we, you know, it's a third world problem. It's, you know, it's, a, it's, not, it's not that we're in poverty and we do have systems in the UK especially to support us. But for me, I'm very proud. I don't want to ask for any help. I want to do it on my own. And that was never an option for me. So I fought my way up and but I know that feeling, that feeling of trying to go to sleep, but all you can think about is the worry about money. You know, it's not nice. Money worries are not nice. So anybody that says, oh, I don't worry about money, or you shouldn't worry about money, or just let it go. Well, actually, they're probably right. Don't worry about it, but don't bury your head in the sand either. Go and take some action. So it might be 
And we were talking about the weekend, and I know a coach of mine was talking to me last week about it doesn't really matter if you're a therapist and you have a part-time job. If that satisfies you and you have the, especially when you start up, you have the security that your bills are paid, your mortgage is paid, and you can eat, then you can concentrate on running a really great business. If, however, I've got the postman coming at the drive now, so he's not looking at me. Oh, isn't it funny? I talk to you guys out in the world and go, yay, the postman comes up the drive, one person. Oh, this is where I wonder if he's going to ring the bell. No, it's okay. It's rattling through the letterbox because I'm in my lounge chair. I'm not up in my office. No, it's okay. I think we're all right. I think I've got away with him out. Yeah, it's gone. Not ringing the bell. But isn't that funny? See how our mindset works. So I've got to change that mindset. Who cares if the postman listens? He might well go on live and listen later. Really, really funny. So Sandra says, went okay after 20 practice run and I kept it very short. Perfect. And Sandra, that's the way to do it. And actually, good on you. 20 practice runs since I saw you Saturday is amazing. Talk about taking action. Big thumbs up from me. The next point that we have for falling out of love with business is you just don't know what to do. You just are stumped as to how to market your business or you're not interested or you are hearing so many ways to market your business that you have just gone into overwhelm. And overwhelm is a huge thing and it, for most people it stops people. So a little top tip is if you're in overwhelm, do a brain dump, get everything out of your head. And this, the group that worked with me on Saturday, they all know, know about a brain dump, I'm encouraging them to do it now. Brain dump everything out of your head, then order it, and then pick one thing only. Now, if that thing's too big, if you pick it and it's a whole title that says Facebook, and you think, but I don't know anything about it, start with, go to my personal page, make sure I've set the private sessions. Number two, once you've done number one, and I don't know one done number one, is you say, right, I'm going to create a business page. Now, nah, don't know how to do it. Okay, so actually the first thing I really need to do is go onto YouTube, Google how to set up a Facebook page, watch a video, and then go and do it. One thing only. One thing at a time. You can't do all this talk about multitasking. I always think I multitask, but I don't really. I don't effectively. All you really can do, and you are quicker, if you focus on one thing and you get it done. Then you focus on another thing and you get it done. So make sure you do that. If you need more help, please come into my free group. It's called Clinic Essentials. Um, I'll pin the link at the top of this post later. Um, come and join us in there. There's going to be a lot more information in there. And uh, there are other ways to work with me, in which case, if you want to work with me in any different ways, just ping me a message. Uh, so Sandra says, all done this morning, and you gave me a mention. Ah, oh, tag me in it, Sandra, and then I'll come and have a look at it. And I'll come and go, yay, on it, and be your, your person that sends loves and hearts on it. Um, the next one, it might be you're seeing too many clients. Maybe that's you're not working your work-life balance. Maybe you're not working what you want. I know I changed it. I was working five, six days a week treating patients. I didn't want to do that anymore. I now treat two. In fact, really, I, think, I, I suppose I do, yeah, I do a day and a half, really, a day and a half of treating patients. That's what I do. I cram them all into that time, but that's my choice. That's what I want to do. I treat them when I want to do. I don't want to treat on Saturdays. I do go and work on a Saturday. I sit at my reception desk, but I don't treat patients. That is my choice. My choice is also, if I want to sneak one on a Saturday, I can, but I make that decision. You know, maybe you're spending more time working on your business than you are treating in your business, and you don't like that. Well, maybe you're not being effective. I was speaking to somebody at the weekend, at the event, and they're posting every day, three or four times a day on Facebook, and they hadn't realised that Facebook had changed its algorithms. And actually, you could do that if you like, but you're not going to get as much reach. Play the game. Go live. Do some Facebook lives. Do, do what the platform wants. I've actually joined a new platform today. I won't say the word on here. Facebook might chuck me off. But I'm, I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can be one of the first people on it. Who knows? Um, I will let the uh, membership group know about it that I'm in, but who knows what's going to happen with that group. I'm on Instagram, which is owned by Facebook. I am doing as much as I can by networking and meeting people and making sure the clients that I currently have, I serve with excellence at all times. Our customer care is the key thing and I'm always banging on about it and I always will bang on about it and I'm not going to apologise about it, but I think people underestimate it. They go down a route thinking they've got to do X, Y and Z and actually marketing is pretty easy if you know what you've got to do. So make sure you decide what you want to do. So what do you love doing? What is your utopia? What do you want to do? Where do you want to be? Do you want to be only a larger clinic? Or actually, do you want to be working from home? And be proud of that. I have so many people that come up to me and say, oh, I only work from home. Oh my goodness. You know, embrace it. It's as good as working in a clinic, okay? It's just what you've chosen. 
I like working from home as my office. I could have an office somewhere. I could go and work at the clinic, but I like being here. There are some real pros about being at home, being able to do other things and managing your hours. But maybe if you're working from home, you don't want people to be available to people five days a week. So if they knock on your door, you will just treat them. Maybe you need to have a bit more structure. What is it you want? And then you can work out how you're gonna to work to it. If you don't know what you want, you are just firing shots in the dark here. You're traveling on, and actually probably what you're doing is you're working day from day to day and not living life. You know, life's too short. Let's have jobs we enjoy, but let's also spend our time off doing stuff we absolutely want to do. If you agree with that, give me a thumbs up. If, you, if, you, if you're watching on Catch Up, if you wanna do a job your utopia would be to do a job you love and take the time off and do the things you love as well and spend it with the people who love, would that be your ideal? And then I want you to think, are you doing that? Or do you need to find out how to really fall back in love with your business? How are you gonna get there? So being a therapist, you see people, you help people, you like being with people. And it's a new thing for me that somebody's brought up me, it's, it's, you know, what is your magic you bring to your business? Maybe that's what you can put into your business a bit more. Remember your magic, know your magic, and put it in. And I'm not talking about going like that and your patient's better or your client's better. I'm talking about what skills you have. Maybe you're very empathetic. Maybe you talk to people easy. Maybe you understand clients easily and you can see when something's not quite right. Maybe like me, my magic, and I'm going to shout about my magic because I think sometimes that's the only way you will believe it and believe it. So I want you to shout about it as well to your followers, to your tribe, is I'm really good with ideas. I am an ideas person. I never thought I was creative, never, from the time, and maybe it's not creative, but when I was at school and we did art, I can't particularly draw, now I can actually, but I can't, I'm not, I can't see things and make it look gorgeous like I like art. But what I can do is I can set things up to look beautiful. So with my house, people are saying to me, oh, it looks really lovely. I quite often, if I dress up, people say, wow, you put things together well. Uh, normally that's because I don't look a scruff, to be honest. Um, even when I was uh, 17, 16, I won the South of England show. I'd won another competition beforehand. Decorated a bowl of fruit. So I am arty creative to some point, but... What I never really realised was, was I had ideas. Because when I was at school, we did creative writing. I wasn't that creative. So I didn't think I was a creative. But it was just because I wasn't listening to what was coming out. So when I wake now, nine times out of ten, when I wake in the morning, I have an idea of what I'm going to do for you guys. A blog, a post, or something in my membership. I get a feeling for things. I now embrace the feeling for things. I seem to know when people aren't feeling right and I'll call them or I'll get in touch with them or I'll make a contact with them. Where does that come from? I don't know. I woke up with the name of my clinic, Fine Fettle. I'm not an artist. I'm not a branding expert, but I knew exactly what I wanted to look like. Even down to the curl on the end of the F and the little heart over the eye. And I knew that I wanted healthcare, Fine Fettle Multi Healthcare, to be part of that name. And fine fettle means in good health. I don't know where it came from. I know where I want to go with my business. I'm not going to tell you everywhere I'm going with my business because there's some big plans going on and things happening at the moment. But don't worry, I'm not disappearing. Or maybe you're going to go, oh God, she's not disappearing. But whichever way it is, there's big things going on in my business. There's changes because I'm working towards where I want to be. My utopia, my ideal business, my living my life, the fittest, the best, and what I really want to do. And I love being an osteopath and I love helping people and I love teaching people like I teach you guys with light bulb moments. You know, I get loads out of that. I am pretty selfish. The reason I do the job I do is because I feel good about doing it. If you want that too, give me a thumbs up. You should want that too. But sometimes there's little hurdles we need to get over. I have tech issues, but I know now what to do. I've learned it or I know the shortcuts or I know who I can go and ask to help me. And that's all you need to do. So I want you now to think how you can get back really truly in love with your business. As I said, if you don't wanna be a therapist anymore, I get that, you don't have to be. Not everybody's cut out to be. But if you do, how are you gonna change it? Give me something, I wanna finish off with give me a why or a no. So a yes for why and an M for no, pretty obvious. Are you going to change something in your business that's going to make a difference today? Are you going to do, as soon as I get off here, think of something that will change your business. Give me a yes or no. I want to know. Give me a yes or no. I'm just going to hang on. You'll all be coming off the live. I'll still be here three hours later. 
Give me a yes or no in those comments. I want to know. I want to commit to it. And I was talking about accountability today with my group. And it was like, well, actually, I do want to make you accountable. So in my membership group on a Monday, it's like, come on, guys, what are you going to do for the week? And on a Friday, we catch up on it. But what I was doing on a Friday, I was going, well, so-and-so said they're going to do, so-and-so said they were going to do this. And it doesn't fit right with me. The reason it doesn't fit right with me is because I'm not actually, you also need to learn to be accountable. You don't need to have me. It's a bit like me on my health and fitness journey. I have a coach in America. And when I first started working with him, he was really making me accountable. But long term, I've got to learn that I need to make myself accountable or make my work, so my, my health and fitness so ingrained that I don't have to think about it anymore. And it's probably like that now. I got up this morning and ran in the snow. You might have seen pictures I posted up there. I went out. There was no excuses, no rhyme or reason. I got up at five. I did all my stuff this morning. You know, because I don't make excuses now. But accountability, yes, if you're in the membership group, I'm still going to come and make you accountable. But I want you to realise that the real person that will only ever make you accountable is you. Because otherwise, what you come on is you keep coming, so I'm going to do this, and by Friday, no, I haven't managed to do it. I want you to take pride that if you're in my membership group, that by the Friday you're going, actually, Helen, I have smashed this. I've done this, this, and this. Or you come into the group and you say to me, I couldn't do it because of X, Y, and Z, but I tried and I've realized there's something else that I need to do. But accountability, don't look to other people. Look for them to inspire you to do it. So look for inspiration, but please don't look for anybody to do the work for you because it isn't going to happen. And I love listening. So the coaches I listen to that I go, I'm going to take that. I'm never going to be like that. Are the ones that tell you it's a really easy three-step system and you can sit on a beach and it'll happen in an instant, right? It isn't like that, but there is a way to make it an easier process of running your business. And if you need me as your ideas person, come and work with me. Just post in the comments, Helen, I'd love to work with you. And I will come back and post all the ways you can. But if not, if you want to just see what I'm like, and if you maybe don't know who I am, if anybody's in here that's worked with me, they can say, I'm loving there's some yeses coming up. So a yes from Sue, a yes from Derek, a yes from Sandra. Did it this morning and that is the start. And you've got to keep it going, Sandra. You know, keep it going and going and going. The Therapist Business Club is me pushing you a little bit more. If you need a little more push and you need a kick, anybody that hasn't joined that wants to be in there, join up. £47 a month. Oh, you're going to get your money's worth. You'll get your money's back. I promise. I'm in there for wobbles. I'm in there for motivation. So if you want to work with me, say, I've got a free group. I'm going to finish on that. If you want to come and join me in the Clinic Essentials free group, I will be in there live tomorrow. There'll be some sort of teach I'll pick up on tomorrow. Um, and lastly, to finish off, I'd like to say just fall in, back in love with your business, please. I don't want you to have a business you don't love. You're doing something you love and you started training in it because you loved it. Go and rekindle that love and get back into what you're doing. And if you need my help, come and find me. Speak to you soon. If you could like and share this, I'd be grateful. Speak to you later. Bye.